All right, off you go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the February 23rd. I always have to look at my computer what day it is. Uh, 23rd edition of the Community Call for Chaos. We're so happy to see everyone. Look at all these people here. It's amazing. I love it. Thank you for joining us. We have a few things to talk about. Um, I think Matt put the minutes in the chat, but I can do it one more time just in case. There we go. Um, and like Matt said, if you want to add your name, feel free. If you don't, that's cool too. We're pretty easy going here. So let's jump into it. Um, the first thing on the agenda is to mention that it is the last week for the community review. So on our metrics that are gonna be released officially in March. So if you have a chance to go through and look at some of those, that would be amazing and give your feedback so we can make sure that what we're releasing is, is the best that it can be. Huge shout out to Ray since he's here this week for, for doing such a great job in all of the metrics and offering his feedback. We really appreciate you, Ray. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So if, well, if hope, I just hope it's helpful, but but oh, no, 100%. but kudos kudos to everybody doing. I mean, put a lot of thought behind the new metrics that are that are teed up. So happy to do it. I do think um, our so one. I was going to say our one outstanding one is it's the issue around commits. Oh no, wait, what's it? Uh, oh, uh, Clones versus oh clones forks. versus yeah. forks. That's right. Yeah, I think we just yeah, still need to yeah. Sort that Hopefully, one out. I didn't open up a can of worms, but yeah, Is that yeah, in it's, the, it's, that's an evolution. Yeah, I can take a look at that. No, um, it's in. It, no, it's in, it's in common. common. I haven't. I I was in those discussions. I don't remember. I haven't looked at the issues though. So it's, it's really just boils down to the terminology between clones and forks. Yeah, I think we can clarify it. We certainly had a lot of discussion and it, it was hard to figure out exactly which words to use and how to describe it. So um, <clears throat> I'll take a look at the comments and add, right. I'll, add I'll something. Find, I'll track it down here too and get it posted so you can take a look. It was the technical forks metric, is that right? Yes. Yeah, I think so. There is also a link in the minutes to um, the metrics page. So if you want to take a look at all the ones that are under review, we'll have a nice little red tag on them that says under review. So if you see anything that sparks your interest, do you want to take a, a quick read at it? Um, that would be great. Uh, let's see, any other comments on that? Questions? Nope, okay, we will move along. Uh, so the next one is, um, I'm going to let Sean talk about this. Um, we're, we've been talking about how we engage the, um, the software community um, around the chaos software project specifically. So Sean, I'll let, you, I'll let you take it and run with it and I'll jump in if you need. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm just going to, sometimes it's easier for people who watch the video to sh see the screen shared. Um, so one of the things that we're aiming to do is uh, really th three things. One is engage working group members as sort of active, active participants in the development of metric prototypes so that there's more of a full circle of a conceptualized metric and what it ends up being so that the implemented piece of software more closely reflects, not that they don't closely reflect already, but as we get into some of these more advanced metrics, I think this is going to become a challenge to make sure that the software implements the intended metric in the way it, that was intended. And, and so we're looking for ways to get non-programmers uh, assistance, not necessarily in programming, but in participating in short uh, form or the beginning of longer form uh, hackathon kind of events where we talk about what it's gonna be and there's some sample data ready and then software developers can work on it. And so to increase engagement with the software development, that's, that's one sort of a way that we're approaching that aim. The second is a lot of times when we have hackathons or we talk to people about software, either uh, Augur or other hackathons I do in my community, um, 
I'm, I think the Grimoire Lab folks may or may not echo some of the same experiences. You spent, we spend a lot of time helping newcomers configure their local environment. There are uh, as many variables as there are computers in the room usually. And so we conceptualize these separate events focused on building new newcomer technical capacity so that when a person gets to a hackathon, they don't spend the entire time figuring out why the version of GCC on their particular operating system isn't the right version to compile wheel <coughs> for some Python library um, that they're using. And, and we have some topics that we've thought of for these and, and we're envisioning them as sort of an hour and in the evening to not interfere with people's work time. So, you know, authentic newcomers, we, we could do them at any time. And I'm really interested in the community's feedback on this part of it. Like when is a good time to do these like two-ish hour workshops uh, and the topics we have, if you look under here are, you know, just configuring and testing Python, like I, I mentioned, I think understanding GitHub or GitLab workflows are are a challenge sometimes for people. It's not always immediately clear. Okay, how do I fork a repository in a way that I can then do a pull request or merge request back to make a contribution? Other things that come up frequently are, you know, well, how do I write a RESTful API? And um, and then finally, a couple of Jupyter Notebook ones because initially. If you're new to Python, new to developing software, Jupyter Notebooks are a really good way just to apply the code without having to understand the underlying operating environment so much. So there's a getting started one that we suggested and then a visualizations one. Visualizations have a, a few other little things that happen that, that might be worth covering in these workshops. So let me take a breath and take feedback, get thoughts, lay it all bare. So I have a, a thought. Um, okay. Yep. So you're trying to find like what, when might be a good time to coordinate with people. Is that right? Right. So trying to, trying to make it easy for those who are newcomers to participate. Would like, I'm trying to think, would there, would there ever be a way to meet people where they are? And so what I mean by that is like, um, in the, say, in the Asia Pacific call, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like they would clearly have an interest in, say, like a giddy worker, right? And I know, and I know you're doing that. So, like, trying to go to places where people are already meeting and talk about Augur there, like or, sometimes it's yeah. it's hard to it's hard to draw people to another meeting, right? And so if if they, if it's in an organization or another community are already having kind of a weekly meeting, we reach out and see, I'm just, in, see if we can't participate in something they already have standing, whoever they might be. I'm just thinking of different ways. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying. And the first thought I had was that going to the meetings for the working groups and talking about this for five minutes and ex explaining it and finding out what times would work for folks in that working group, I think is a good idea. I think the challenge with the 50 minute time blocks is it's just not enough time to get people started on a technical task. Um, that's the trick. That's the, that's the hard part. And, and the technical, the software development people are generally not the folks who are coming to the working group meetings. And so by talking to the working groups, I think we could perhaps have members of working groups identify software developers they know who might be interested in pursuing this path. Um, but those are just the first thoughts that came to mind. The, the constraint is definitely that an hour just doesn't give us enough time. Matt, were you thinking of like external groups, like uh, yeah. someone else, like a user group or something like that? Like whomever these mysterious groups that I can't name might be, um, that might benefit from participating in 
in this type of engagement. So like setting up another two hour meeting for chaos and trying to draw people there, that can work, I think. Yeah, I mean, we're, um, we're it's an experiment. Yep. Um, but also like going to where the people that you're trying to draw in already are. I don't, right. I don't know where are yeah. those people. Well, that's, that's the thing. I don't think, I don't, I don't know where those people are. Um, one of the thoughts I have is that the folks who are involved in the working groups may know people who would be interested in learning these things or building these skills or participating in chaos using their software development uh, talents. But I, I don't know where to go uh, to get these folks um, other than to start with where we are in the chaos community. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's lots of organizations that do hackathons for, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I believe this would also be something easier to execute if we have events like OSSNA or um, FOSDEM that, that we could use as, as a face-to-face -face sorts of places. So we're trying to invent something in a sense. Well, that, that was going to be my question is just what what's the impetus to do this ourselves versus submitting this as a workshop to go into an existing event or satellite for an existing event that's i think i think if there are existing events that we could satellite we should we should do that that that's a really good idea um especially for the workshops because i think that those would draw people and introduce them to the chaos context I don't know where those places are outside of the, the usual suspects of OSS Summit North America and FOSDEM. Although I know LF has a ton of, of um, meetings. I think it's too late for MozFest because they also have a program that has workshop sessions as well as discussion and presentation. So I, I'm just learning about a lot of these too because I'm relatively new to the space, but I feel like there probably are a couple more that we could pull together um, but that's I guess the the question then is how often do you want to run these <laughs> or how many do you want to run or is this sort of a one-time deal um, from so it depends on success if like I when I've started things before the initial engagement is low and if we make sure that people have fun the participation grows in, in a face-to-face -face universe. Um, and I think in online hackathon-like things, I've seen the same thing. So I, my expectation would be that, you know, we're gonna, my thought is I'm gonna give whatever this becomes, you know, a solid six months of evolution and development to see what, what sticks and what doesn't. You know, I don't expect every item on this list to stick. I think the suggestion of, looking for other events where we could have a workshop within it, it is a really good idea because that's a way of introducing software folks to the chaos world. My only comment with that is um, two thoughts. Um, I think the one, one thing is we would have to look at timing like OSSNA or OSSEU, I guess, isn't until September. So like that would be a good idea if it was happening sooner, I think. So I don't know what's happening right now, but um, that's something that we would want to kind of look at is because we want to do these sooner than later. Like we don't want to wait till December or whatever to, you know, be have a community that can actually contribute back. So and then the other thing is, I don't I don't know that these have to be like super formal tutorial workshops. Like, I don't know what your feeling is, Sean, but I feel like they can be pretty, pretty easy, you know, and pretty uh, informal and fun, like you said. And so like, I think the overhead and if we have two people show up, okay, well, that's cool. Then we have two really engaged people that might be really quality participants later on, as opposed to, I think sometimes at a conference, it's just so much stuff that like it gets diluted. And so people might come in and out and might be, so you get more 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 eyes on it but like the people who actually come back and and want to participate and engage in the chaos community specifically i don't i don't know if that's uh 
if that's something that we'll get from that. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we can I don't know either. Yeah. Um, but I feel like if someone's coming to us, then they are already kind of interested in what we're doing and, and want to learn. So I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a two prong approach. Maybe it's both of those things that we try and see. Sean, did you say that like the amount of content you have or you're thinking it was like a couple of hours or did I so, so, did I so, not hear that correctly? So I've, I've, I've kind of categorized. So I've, there's like three types of events and the, the middle one, number two, is a focused on building basic technical capacity. So where they would be more like workshop tutorial kinds of things where, hey, let's get your your Python operating environment set up so that you can work on a Python project and understand how to change your virtual environment or what a GCC lib version issue is on compile. Um, what, you know, a lot of like, I would say 30% of the people who show up with MacBooks have not installed command line tools. Um, get the basic, basic things that every developer stumbles on in their first hackathon out of the way. Uh, and then some of the other items I think could appear to a, could appeal to a broader audience who just wants to know a little bit more about each thing. Yeah, I mean to to follow on what Elizabeth was saying. I mean, rather than I mean, just latching on to like existing big events is is a good idea, but I mean things are not going to be normal for for a long time, especially in terms of events, right? I mean. Right. You know, we can just do like an online, like a hackathon, and I, I wouldn't worry too much about like how many people actually show up. Like as long as like we record them and that's available, uh, I would pay more because I, I believe we have a YouTube channel in Chaos, right? I would pay more attention to how many people are actually watching the recording after the fact versus how many people actually showed up during the event. Like, that's yeah, I mean, idea. even even if two or three people show up, but 50 people view the recording um, later on, then I think that's definitely a win. And you can break that out into like, you know, two or three, like an hour chunks of like, you know, live stream talks, or you could, it could just be a Zoom talk that people can dial in, but it's recorded and posted somewhere. Um, and I think that just requires a lot less overhead, like you, you know, you're in fully in control of the of the event uh, versus relying on some some other organizers. But right. I mean, that's just my thought. But I appreciate I appreciate that. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it is pretty. I do this with my class all the time. Mm -hmm. These kinds of right. events. So right. <clears throat> these are low, the, the event focused building capacity ones are low hanging fruit for me. And <clears throat> I think having events folk having the hackathons themselves focused more around working groups and less around auger i think is a positive because it invites grimoire lab in as well so if if there's a grimoire lab hackathon that they want to host focused on building a metric for a working group that it, it doesn't it's not an auger thing it's a it's a chaos thing and auger is just my instrument that's what i play but um, the grimoire lab instrument is good as well so it's not yeah I, I want I want it to be an open tent and back to the original question super quick um because we do have a lot of other stuff to talk about yeah. but um the the evening hours how did people feel about that The reason I proposed it is a lot of the newcomers and participants seem to be students or really early career people who can't get their boss or their schedule to work during the day. So that's that's where that came from, just so people know. I'm I'm fine with it as long as Sean's fine with it. <laughs> yeah. I, I am. I mean, obviously, it won't be every week or every night, but it'll right. be often. And you know, I, I um, with the current COVID situation, I do. Um, I have an online class, and I do unofficial, not required, uh, live lectures in the evenings, one day a week. Okay. Um, just if students want to come and participate and ask questions, usually a handful do, and it makes the recording a little bit more useful for everyone else. 
Um, so yeah, I have no problem like one night every week or two I mean, for I'm two hours. Listening to you talk and all the feedback from everybody, it did just make me think, and I'll be, I'll be brief, Elizabeth, that um, like these sessions sound a little bit kind of one off technically, like would we ever want to this doesn't have to happen now, but like in the future, run a hackathon where there's like a series of events and there's a prize and we're actually trying to onboard people. And, you know, we run yeah. it like a, like an actual, you know, like I'm sure Missouri does it, but like yeah. you know, those summer events where you bring in students and they participate in a, like a game, like a capture the flag kind of game. Absolutely. Know. We'd want to do that. Um, in fact, Mizzou, my, my college is holding an online hackathon for the first time uh, this weekend. I have no and idea. And there's, there's winners, right? And there's yeah. like a two day event and, and people right. win things right. participating. I, I think I think that's a really good idea. Um, I think if for my own not having run something like that before, I think getting our feet wet doing these kinds of things and is going to be lower hanging fruit. I think if, if there's anyone in the community who's run an event like that before, I would love to let me, work let me with talk them to, to make that happen. Let me talk to my dean's office here because we do these in the summer okay. and see if we can't either connect with existing stuff that's going on yeah, or even just pro provide like <laughs> some guidance yeah. on what to do. Okay, but let me, I'll, gonna... I'll, I'll, I'll connect you with folks. Thank, thank you, that would be great. Cool. This concludes this part. <laughs> <laughs> and see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so thank you everyone for your feedback and your input on that. We really appreciate that very much. If you have any other thoughts, you can email me or Sean later on. Um, okay. So the next one is the DNI self reflection. And that is going to probably be a Matt G thing. If you would like to talk about that, Matt G. Yeah. You can great. also comment. I mean, you know, <laughs> so we, so just so you all know, right, we're we're in the midst of kind of doing starting a, a chaos uh, self reflection around our own DNI practices or DEI practices, um, and so the goal here is to help you know the project be more inclusive as we move forward and share what we learn with other projects and also maybe even assist those projects in their own efforts. Um, so uh, Justin Flory who I don't know is on this call. Um, he's at UNICEF. He's agreed to kind of help serve as the liaison between external people who will kind of provide this reflection for us and the actual workings of the chaos project. Um, as always, if you have an interest in participating in this effort, just let me know or let Elizabeth know and we should be good. And yeah. There's a call coming up with Justin and us, right? Uh, yeah, I was. I think we're trying to find a time. So. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. Awesome. Um, any questions on that from anyone? I will say I think this is going to be a fairly, you know, long process. So this isn't something that's going to resolve, uh, be resolved quickly, or be done quickly, I should say. So I mean, I think we're looking at you know six to nine months. Kind of process so it's a slow reflective process on our own our own work if we don't have any questions then we'll just move along to the next one which is to talk about outreachy i see um That's there's me, a link me. there me okay. too <laughs> so we had talked about the possibility of applying to Outreachy without having the $6,500. I don't think we can. So if you click on that link, they have what's called a general fund. And the general fund, I'm pretty sure is like funds that are at Outreachy. And you have to be a humanitarian project to apply for dollars from the general fund. And if you're a non-humanitarian open source project, which we are, mm -hmm. um, you have to provide your own your own dollars. So that's just my read of it. If if people click that link and read it differently, you can tell me otherwise. 
we are, our community fund is not full of that money now. Uh, no, okay. we don't have enough to, you're talking like the own, our own chaos bank account kind of thing. Well, there was the Linux fund that we had for a while, but I think we lost. We still have it, but it's just well, not enough money. It's just not enough money. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So does anybody read that differently? The link? If you no. Do, great. No, I don't see how. I mean, it would be pretty tortured to make an argument where a humanitarian open source project. Yeah. There is, there is a line there that says non-humanitarian projects can apply for additional funding as well. But the, the way it's written, I think the implication is that you still pay for part of it and you're just like yeah, getting so, help paying for some of it. So, Well, like last year when we did it, we had brought the, the $6,500 and then there was an opportunity to kind of be part, kind of what you're talking about, Kevin, part of the general fund. But that didn't occur until after we had already brought those $6,500 forward. Does anybody have any comments on that or, or thoughts? I don't know if there's something like fundraising we could do if this is something that we really, really want to, to do, but I don't know if that's really something we've done in the past. I don't think, I think it's March 1st is the organizational deadline. So we'd be pretty hard pressed. Really, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Anybody on this call want up. to give us $6,500? Right, clean out <laughs> your pockets, up. your couch cushions, get the change. Yeah, I, I agree that we probably can't do this uh, this time, but Elizabeth does bring up uh, a good point about funding. Uh, do we have kind of reoccurring ways that chaos fundraises and gets money or, or just or does it just kind of appear every now and again <laughs> it appears from chaos cons uh -huh. and it ap appears from google summer of code so are there are th should we maybe be thinking about more structured ways of, of fundraising year round so that we can afford to do the these outreachy events when we want to and yeah things of this nature Yes, you, you heard uh, you heard the extent of my fundraising yeah. <laughs> ability about uh, two minutes ago. <laughs> so, I don't. It's not I guess really maybe that's something something to think about uh, moving forward. Yeah. How we can do reoccurring fundraising. Yeah, I mean, I, I think donations are always accepted. But uh, yeah, donations are always accepted. But are we are we actively trying to get donations, and should we be actively trying to get donations? It certainly is a big job for someone to spend a lot of time on that. I will say. I mean, my my level of comfort, like personally, is when I reach out to organizations to help support chaos con if that's all i've ever done yeah i've done like merch sales for php women and stuff like that um when we were trying to raise some money but it was mostly like t-shirts and things with the logo on it so i mean that's always an idea but i don't think we ever made a ton of money on that <laughs> i think um, it was barely anything so did you do it at conferences or did you do it online we did both yeah okay. we did both it was actually it turned out to be more of a hassle to keep track of all the money than the actual funds that came in so gotcha yeah okay i think the main way that um i've always broken even or made money is on events and doing the sponsorship for the events. And since you are doing all of these other different ones, doing sponsorship for those is good because I don't know how that works with the Linux Foundation, but with Hyperledger, you know, it was pretty easy to, you know, give away a certain amount of branding to each of those different ones. And, and people are always, they've all, they, you know, it's all about finding those pre-existing corporate pathways for giving money to things. 
And when they can sit there and say, oh, if you donate X amount to this event, we'll put you here, we'll put you here, we'll put you here. And that's an easy thing for them to cost justify. So if you were that, that would probably be my biggest recommendation is that because I found that the pockets are deeper for that. Um, and that they do expect something to be in the five to 10K realm or more depending on the type of event, but for something that y'all are doing, they do expect it to be smaller and doing things of that nature. Yeah. So, um, it's a more doable thing where every single time I've done t-shirts, I've lost money. <laughs> So I can't really say t-shirts, yay. I always do t-shirts because it's a money loser, but it's a brand, it's an extremely branded um, positive. Yes, I <laughs> encourage all software technology vendors to continue to bring Boku t-shirts to conferences when they resume. So, my my t-shirt supplies running short. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, so that, that I've always viewed stickers and t-shirts as being le lost leaders. Um, but when you want to actually, you know, get some cash in, it's normally been sponsorship of events have worked well for me for small. It has, it's worked well for us in the past too. the chaos cons, not a ton, but right. Yeah. I think we've had registration for chaos con solely to get a real reading on them at participation level more than to make money. Listening to this conversation, the idea is like uh, we can use the corporate as sponsorship to, uh, as a like outreachy intern, like taking a corporate uh, sponsorship and putting it on the website. Like this uh, internship is sponsored by a particular so and so company. In this way, we can market. It seems a little bit different. Like I don't know, I don't have a good sense on support from organizations around something like outreachy for mentorship to me the the support for things like conferences is much more apparent so i'm not sure what a request for mentorship would look like or how it would be received within an organization does the the lf doesn't have any kind of general funds for their projects to participate in things like this um, I don't know. Let me. Some I of the diversity include. This would be certainly a diversity and inclusion effort. I gotta ask. That's not a, That's a good question, Elizabeth. Yeah. If you if we wanted to tie outreachy or Google and Summer of Code funds directly to uh, these conferences, I think the way we would do it is by uh, having the the intern. Do a presentation at the conference so then when when you're collecting money for the conference you can say part of this money goes to fund uh, an outreachy intern uh, to come and present at the conference based on their work right that would be one way to tie them together okay i think that's a good idea conferences that I've done in the past, one of the things that we did is um, we had like a special registration code where you actually paid more money and th the money was donated to, to something. Like in a lot of cases, we used to do it for diversity tickets. So we'd basically say, you know, pay this, buy this one and it costs more money, but you, somebody else gets to come to the conference. So you could do something like that with the conferences too. You could charge a little more It was a code or was it just on the site that's like? No, it was just on the your... site. It was one of the oh, okay. one of the registration options. So you have like early bird, you had, mm -hmm. you know. I've, uh, I've always liked that model. So you also okay. sometimes see it with uh, the conference is completely free for everyone. However, if you want to pay for a ticket, it, it goes towards fundraising for the project. Matt, you look like you're writing these down. I am on my notebook. That's awesome because I'm not. So good. I'm glad someone <laughs> is keeping track of all these amazing ideas. I suppose like I that. should be typing them in the minutes, but they're <laughs> a little unrelated, but sort of related to this. Yeah, they're more for like chaos con future right. stuff. So I don't want to speak too out of turn for Emily, but she's on the call too. And right now we're gearing up to do one of our workshops in April. And uh, one of the things that the MAG is doing for the community as a whole is we're going to be creating sponsorship templates. 
So that might be something fun to use and crib off of if you are interested. So, um, you know, because of the fact that we are trying to like create all of these best practices and things like that in marketing, um, it might be something that, you know, y'all might want to play with. Um, but it's, it's just now getting started. It's not done. <laughs> if you could share them, that would be great. So Emily's done. on a bunch of these. So uh, I'll, I'll give that to Emily to uh, keep an eye on for us. Yeah, I can put my email in the notes. And then that way, as we develop them, if we um, have anything that, that you guys can use, um, then we can, uh, you guys can email me or I can send you the stuff. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Got a pro in the house. Sorry. <laughs> when do we, Matt, remind me, when do we start planning for Chaos Con if it's going to happen in the fall this time, right? I always, I always defer that to Georg. I'm like, <laughs> I feel like, I know we've talked about this before. I feel like he said six months or so. Yeah. And we're trying to do something maybe with e it's OSSU, maybe. Right? Yeah, it'd be, probably be a little bit less than, a little bit less than fewer than six months, but, but so right in that like world. June-ish yeah. time think, frame. Okay. I think four, I think we did four months for one, but I think that was kind of, uh, we were kind of pressing. Hey, Sean, you're still sharing your screen. Oh yeah, you kind of saw, I was looking at my auger error message. I was trying to stay on task, but <laughs> Sorry. I, I, we my brain, I, I drifted because an error message came up and I was trying to figure out what it meant. <laughs> Apparently, Not your my 12-year-old Xeon processor, whatever age it is, I think it's about 12, is not going to work with what I'm trying to do. So, looking up. Sorry. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and move on. We have um, badging is next, and I'm guessing that's also a Matt G. Did you put that on what there? do you know? Okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> Oh, Matt Snell, hi. Yeah, Matt Snell was in the last meeting. So, Matt, go ahead. Uh, what is this? Just the update for the day? I just got here. Well, oh, well, yeah. So I'll. I, that's okay. You can. I'll. I'll talk, and you can just kind of fill things okay. in. So, um, so Matt, actually, this is good. Um, so we're gonna, with respect to the people who are serving as reviewers, we're gonna provide little like care package envelopes to say thank you to them, like what we do with. Uh, chaos cast people who participate and Matt we can just use sticker mule here so if you wanted to design a sticker using the chaos logo or something along those lines and um, and see how it looks in sticker mule we can you and I can coordinate and we can just get those sent you know like to me or to you um, we have so the Linux foundation has been really great in terms of submitting event requests. Um, I think our most recent is, what is it, OpenJS? Our Pledge of Global Forum. Oh, okay. There's even a newer one, which is cool. I think we're at half a dozen. Uh, um, I think we're on the review number seven uh, as, a, as the most recent one. And uh, we just, we're, we're actually finishing up that review right now. So this, it's, this is really this is really going well from my perspective. One of my concerns is um, that we don't ask reviewers to do too many reviews, that we're not burning people out on doing the reviews. I know it's not a ton of time, um, but it certainly is um, thoughtful effort that people are putting into these reviews. So I think one of our goals right now is to really do reviewer recruitment to help events move through the process of yeah. DNI badging. Um, so thanks to Matt and thanks to Elizabeth. I think you've been sending out quite a bit of stuff too. Um, Do you have a link to a sign up sheet to be a reviewer? No, I don't think so. I think right now, doesn't it just go to you, Elizabeth? Do people do, or Matt maybe? I, I, when I put it out in the newsletter and on Twitter, I have them come to me just so I can kind of give, because a lot of people are like, what's this about? So I'm just trying to be like that first line of 
defense for Matt Snell so he doesn't get bombarded. So, um, but then I think they go, well, then I send them to Matt when I, you know, to, to kind yeah. of get them onboarded and things. So, so it's really kind of and informal. Kevin, we also have a Google form and I get notified of uh, any time that somebody submits something to that. If we need, um, if we need a form to go with, I've got a Google form for that. To, to request to be a reviewer, to sign up to be a reviewer? Yeah, to sign up to be a reviewer. Yeah, I totally forgot about that, actually, Matt. Do you want me to send people to that form instead? Is that online? That'd be good. Is that online anywhere? Uh, yeah, I'm grabbing the link now. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. And thanks for all of that, um, for all the effort. This is going really, really well. And the feedback has been super positive. Uh, so far from, I think, the reviewers and the people going through the process, the events going through the process. So that's great. Um, there was, Elizabeth, do you have that blog post, the CD? Do you know the one I'm talking about? I do. I just need to find it. One second. Hold, please. Okay. <laughs> Can't hold. Um, all right. And then, Matt, I know you're doing some work on automation right now. I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. Yes, I'm still getting used to the laptop, but um, so the automation um, I have. Um, so right now, the reviewer system, the way we set it up originally, because we weren't focused on getting a lot of review requests at once, um, is that we have a random assignment of reviewers um, from the pool of reviewers that we have. So we need we realized with a lot more reviews coming in or review requests that we needed we need to make something a little more structured than random assignment. So. Um, I'm working, actually, I should get it done. Um, we're migrating to um, a new cloud platform for the bot, and then we are um, going to be focusing on getting that um, a little more stable and make a lot more sense for how, how it works. But uh, right now, the, ba the badging bot will function the same on the outside, but on the inside, it's going to have some upgrades in the next couple of days. Cool. Thank you, Matt. And please, 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 anybody on this call, if you'd like to serve as a reviewer and help other events think through their DNI practices, that would be great. I just put that the form. form. In chat. <laughs> put your name in there. That'd be awesome. Could really use your help. Um, Can we link this form on the Cures website so that if anyone visits and want to be a reviewer, can fill the form so that they can get the visibility. Yeah. I think so. Elizabeth, I'm just going to go right to the last one because I put that in there too. Rock on. So the last one was I was thinking about the community reports. So we haven't gotten a, on like badging, we haven't gotten a ton of traction on the community reports. And I was just thinking, trying to think through the best way to, to kind of do this. And Part of me was just thinking maybe just on the website, we just point people to Cauldron and we point people to Augur's automated tooling. I'm just thinking out loud, like the community reports were really meant to be a way to, to show a couple different metrics, kind of composite metrics to people. So they would submit a, a one repository URL. We would do a little bit of work on the back end. And then a report, a PDF report would be generated and returned to the person. There was some human work on the back end. Um, and so I'm just wondering, how do we generate interest? And part of me was thinking maybe we just point people to Cauldron and also port, point people, because uh, Sean, I know you have an automated yeah. report I, request for Augur. I'm just yeah, like, I think the, the so I don't want to, I would say I don't want to give up on the community reports yet for two reasons. One, I, I think we haven't had the opportunity to promote them at public events. Um, and two, we've got a Google Summer of Code request in for automating them. <laughs> um, and I think if I think if that person, if we get that person and they were successful, then this would get a lot easier. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Mm. Because that, that's I, I have even developed a micro task for like uh, the student for doing this automation for. To totally fair. This wasn't like a run to get rid of them right here. <laughs> it was just, 
I just try to think of ways to, to get this information to people in the best possible way and sticking with it. If you want to stick with it right on, I think that's cool. I like I to give stuff out. like this, like six months or a year before I give up on it, I guess I can say. Cause it takes um, a while I can put to out catch a, a tweet if, if we want to like, cause I know we're, we're kind of looking for projects that would be willing to be our samples so that we can kind of get the ball going and show what, what they look like in the public. Uh -huh. Um, so I could put out some tweets. I can put it in the newsletter again. I can um, do a little bit more just broad promotion. I know we've targeted certain people here and there and have gotten not a great response to it. So um, we could try that if you want. That'd be great. We might we might experiment with uh, some different metrics as well uh, for community reports. And then and then additionally, I think the the part that's kind of missing for the user is like, so here's the metrics, but how can we, how can we understand them in context? So maybe, maybe a blog article or some discussions of what these, what this report means for my community or, you know, kind of showing the metrics in use. Uh, no, this is off track, so is it okay? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So context will be shared by the community getting the report or we are going to do it? I'm trying to comprehend that. Well, I think we would we would try to do it as a, maybe as a partnership with the community that we're looking at, you know, to kind of, to help understand how they are understanding these metrics and what these metrics mean to them. So I think both us and them together, maybe a, a partnership between the community and us to write, to write a, a blog or kind of a, uh, just a post about what this means. I like Otherwise, we're just throwing idea. the metrics out there and thinking, yeah, like, does this mean anything? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, Thank well, you. sorry to chop this off, but we are one minute past our time. So um, thank you everyone for coming. Hold any thoughts you have till later or else put them to the mailing list, put them wherever, and we will see you all next week. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.